What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be doing some more stuff with React QL. Um, so I set up a server recently that is a GraphQL endpoint. I'm going to hook it up to React QL and see if we can actually get my own custom GraphQL stuff showing up here. So before we get started, I just want to show you what I have set up. So as you can see, I have this web page up right now. So if I pop up, open the terminal, I have two things set up. One, I'll just control C this. Um, I have my GraphQL server template up um, and I'm in the nesting um, branch. So that's the latest that I've done. Um, this just has um, the code and some GraphQL schema set up so we can actually query some stuff. And then I'm just running npm start to start that guy up. So we have a GraphQL server running. Um, and then and over here, I have the React QL front end running. This is running on localhost 8080, so I have both those up. And then over here in Visual Studio Code, I have the code for um, this guy, for React QL. Now, if you don't have either of these things and you'd like to follow along, I'll put a link in the description below for this guy, the server. Um, if you want to get clone it, you can. And then React QL, I actually haven't done anything, so it's not in GitHub yet. Um, I just have the, basically, when you run React QL, um, and get it set up um, just like the starter. So if you don't know what React QL is or you don't know how to install it, I'll link you to my earlier video in the description below so you can get this set up. Okay, but if you're here and you're ready to see what's next, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing is I want to start creating data from this server, which is running on localhost 3000. Um, so we're just going to copy this. And we're going to come over here and change, I think it was config, one of these was config, yep, config and then project. Um, and then this is the endpoint to the GraphQL server. So I'm going to paste mine in. Mine is at localhost 3000 and I'm going to put GraphQL. So save that. Now our, my queries are going to be different here, so I'm assuming there's going to be an error now. If I come back to this, yep, see how the server no longer says that? And let's see, if I come and inspect this, yep, we see some errors from GraphQL. Oh, and it looks like we might have to add a cores header to the server to let this work. We'll have to see, because it says uh, request does not pass access control um, because we're going over. And actually, let's do that now. So to get rid of this error, I think we have to add cores to the server. So I'm going to pop back over here and I'm going to say code to open this project up in Visual Studio Code. And I already know what we need to do to get this working. I'm going to do yarn add cores. Um, this will allow us to tell what we want the cores of the project to be. So I'm just going to go into the index folder and we're going to import cores from cores and then I'm just going to say app dot use cores and we're going to let everyone in right now. That's what the star does. So cores is for restricting access to who can access your server and if you do a star it says everyone can access my server. Okay so now I'm going to do npm start and make sure everything goes okay and it does um, and just to make sure come back over here, refresh, and see, we should get a new error. Cool, bad request is exactly what we want to get because we have a different schema. So I'm going to close this, we're done with this. Oops, and real quick, let's just do, I guess we're in a different branch. I'll have to fix this later. I should go to a new branch of this. Um, so actually, let's just do that right now. So get status, I had just made these three changes. I'm going to get to checkout branch, and this will be React QL. Get status, we should still see them here. Cool. Get add all, get commit, add cores. And we'll push it up so you guys can see this. All right, so now this should be on GitHub. Now I'll do npm start, and our server's up, and I'm just going to put this over here. Now we can come back over here. So these are the two queries that they're running. 
all messages and messages. This is a fragment. We can actually just delete this. We don't need to worry about that. And here we can do a new query. So let's just do a basic query. Um, so we'll get user, let's say, admin. And let's just get his name, his username, oops. All right, so this is a query that we want to execute. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in here, and get rid of this other stuff. And I'm going to do get user as the name of this now. Okay, so we created this new query, get user, and now we'd like to execute that. So if I go back to the app, um, I think it was around here. Yep. So this all messages is executing this GraphQL thingy. So if we just, we're going to search for it. Here we go. So instead of all messages, we're going to say get user. Get user here. All right. And we're going to come down here. And now here, I'm going to say get user. And GraphQL message, that's fine. We're going to have a new message though. So the data, um, this is going to be get user here. Um, and it's not going to return an array. It should be returning, I think it, so get user should be an object, I think. Shape. Um, and inside this shape, there should be one called username, which is a string. So prop types dot string. I think that's it here. They had it here, didn't they? Yep, is required. Okay, so if you're not exactly sure what's going on right here, we're just saying what the expected JSON return when we go to the GraphQL server. So when we go to the Gra uh, GraphQL server, we expect um, the return, at least of the get user query, to look something like this. We should get an object back that has a data um, object in it. And inside the data object, there should be a get user object. And inside get user, there should be a username. And this username should be a string like Bob or something. And for us, it's going to be admin. So to tell um, React that that's what we expect, we say data, and shape is how you, you do an object. So um, we expect there to be an object date or data. Um, and then shape, and inside of shape, you say what, what each property is supposed to be. So get user. Get user is also an object, so we use shape, and then the username, which is a string. Okay. So now, in our data here, we're going to get the username, which we're going to check if data.getUser is there, and then we get data.getUser.username. Um, and then is loading is fine, and then username we can put here. We'll just say username. We'll say my username is, and we could put message back. Okay, I have no idea if this is going to work. Let's see if it does. Pop back over here, and awesome, guys. We get the admin up and running. So we're correctly getting running that query uh, that we have set up here. So we can see that's what we expected to get admin when we search admin. So nice. Um, there's one last thing I want to show you guys, um, and that's going to be it for this video. And that's the Apollo React uh, dev tool. So I recommend pretty much all you guys getting this. I have some junk in here right now from an old one. but. Um, what this does is, let me see, yep, this is what I expected. Um, this is a nice tool, um, I don't know if it's on Firefox, but it's on Chrome, and it allows you to run the queries that you're getting. So this get user thing, I can run in GraphQL here, and I can see what I would have gotten, and I can also, you know, it's just like a little graph IQL, or graphical um, shell here, 
that you can just type type things and test out the server response real quick without me having to go over here type stuff out I can just do it real quick here and it tracks the queries that actually happen so notice there's two queries that happened I'm not sure what this three one is looks like we ran it twice for some reason but it tracks the queries that are happening so you know which ones and you can actually see the store um, which I'll talk more about in a future video how the store works and how you can use this to your advantage but yeah, that's it for this video, guys. So we got admin to pop up here. So we successfully connected React QL to our own GraphQL server. So that's awesome. So if you guys have any questions or had any trouble setting this up on your own, please let me know in the comments below, and I'd be happy to help you guys out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.